Oh, YouTube. Long time no see. I'm uh, doing my second video today. Um, I, I wanted to show you. Um, now, I've had this motor running before uh, using hall sensors and uh, FETs. But I just wanted to. Uh, to show this motor run. Um, I've been running this thing with uh, with power from you know um, one of those you know, one of these connector things. Um, it just takes 12 volts What's funny about this, the Bedini circuit, you know, you got to spin the motor yourself. When I was running it with the FETs, you know, the FETs just generated so much more power. You didn't need to. You didn't need to spin it. Just self, self, self start. I don't know if you can hear this thing. This thing is really, really spinning fast, I and mean, it doesn't look like it's spinning that fast. But it's spinning at 161 hertz, 166 hertz, 161 hertz. Well, it's fluctuating a little bit. Um, it's making, uh, sorry for the camera movement, it's making uh, plus. 58.8 and minus 33.6 so it has a peak to peak of uh, 92.4 and it's fluctuating at 160 mid 166 hertz I actually had it going faster I had it going like 170 there it goes. I don't know if you can hear this thing. It is really pumping up now. And let's get a measurement on this thing. Thirteen hundred. It's gone faster. Let's see. It doesn't want to take a measurement like that, so I have to get like this. Hmm. See what it says here. Okay. Hmm. I know that anyway. This thing is freaking smoking a lot faster than that. Fifteen hundred. That's more like it. Fifteen oh three. Now, when I was running this thing with the Fets. I get this thing to 2,500, almost 2,600 RPMs with these two coils. Remember, this is only with 12 volts. And with the FETs, um, 
with the FETs I can actually I can crank the voltage up and, and really get this thing going real real fast now, the reason I built this thing is because Mr. Angus Wangus said that if you run this thing at 60 Hertz 62 63 Hertz that the back EMF goes through the the cord and back into the uh, the, the transformer and back into the into the grid and it's supposed to you know make your meter run backwards or something I, I couldn't tell if my meter was running backwards because my I have one of them smart meters and it just seemed to be all over the place I, I can't I can't even figure out how the hell those things work you turn off all the lights in the house and the power number goes up I don't know if there's some delayed reaction or whatever but anyway I ran the thing for about four hours or one evening and I went out and looked at the number and the number was a lot lower than what it was on average it was like it was averaging like 460 uh, point point four six zero k watts per hour and when I was when I ran this thing and went out there and looked it was around 290 and that's about as close as I got to figuring out that this thing was doing anything in terms of putting energy back in to the grid. It just, it wasn't consuming. The average consumption of the house dropped by about a third. And that's about as much as I can confirm. So, uh, you know, to, to run this thing for a month, I don't know. I don't know. I hope maybe somebody out there knows how to access the data online for a smart meter. Maybe they got more up-to-date figures, or is there some way to monitor your the usage in the house, you know, based on their online measurements or whatever I don't know somebody please shoot me a line if, if that's the case other than that that's it another Bedini motor working like a champ that's the new update I do notice that if you crank these things down and you get the peaks it's And you pull that peak down. Let me put this ground on here. There we go. You see, that's the normal sign, the normal wave you expect right there. But see how it. See how when you. When you turn that up, and this thing really starts spinning, that peak goes way up. You can see the drops, it drops really low right here, and then it goes real high and then falls flat before it sees the next pulse. You, know, you can see that transition right there. I mean, this is the normal. This is the normal pulse you expect to see. That high. This is the. This got to be a reverse voltage. The EMF spike. That's the high spike. Um, as you roll this down, and that's one thing I don't really understand about this is that the lower you roll this down, the higher, oops, the higher the peak to peak goes. But look at, look at how the minimum voltage, now this is, this is supposed to be a, 
you know, in AC waveform, but how come I'm only negative 2.8 volts? Negative 3. And look at the positive voltage. Which would mean that this thing, I don't know, it seems like it would, it's, it's inverting or something. Because I would expect this peak to be the back EMF since the coil collapses and you see that real high, that real high peak. But then when you change this, the RPMs go up. You can see the ninety volts, ninety one point six volts. Negative seven point six, positive eighty two point eight, two hundred and ninety one hertz. This thing is freaking smoking right now. Nineteen hundred RPMs. Well, 1400, 14, yeah, 1975. Seventeen seventy. Seventeen sixty nine. Look at that. Almost 300 hertz. Now the 300 hertz is because I got six, six magnets. So that's what it's seen. It's seen, you know, you divide that number by, by six. And then divide it again by 60 to get to minutes and that will give you the real RPM and, I, and I've already done the calculations a couple of times. These meters are really, really close. Even though these meters are like, you know, 12 bucks on eBay, you know, they're really, really close. Anyway, that's it. The screaming Bedini motor looks like a champ. Anyway, if you guys uh, know anything about these smart meters, man, drop me an email or uh, a message on my on the comment section. I appreciate that. Otherwise, y'all be good. Talk to you guys next time.